that garden look the way it does now. So if you have questions, I'll try to answer any of them. Yes? When you're cutting that from the bush or the shrub, how close to the roots do you cut that off? Uh, when I put it in the, uh, when we put this in a pot, we'll cut this off to about right there so that it will have very little stem left. Uh, and the beauty of doing this, when you are potting them after they, the air layers have formed roots, you don't have to worry about getting them the exact level of soil because they haven't been in the soil before. So it makes it a little easier if you sometimes maybe a little higher than the soil level you think it should be, but it really doesn't make a difference there. So do you take the sphagnum moss and still enclose it with the dirt around it? Nope. Just we open this container and use them again and again. Okay. That's why, uh, and we take the top off first. You have to use a screwdriver, at least we found it's the easiest thing to unsnap this. And then when we unsnap it, the roots generally are formed on the plant and the sphagnum moss you can pull away. If it's so entwined that you can't, you can leave it, but we try to take most of it and pull it off. Do you fiddle tie around it that you show it to me? Uh, yes, except I brought the short tie and it's not going to go around it. But use ties like this if you want to make sure. This one is very tight, so you don't have to worry about putting a tie around it. And this one also is sitting on a limb, so you don't have to. But otherwise, you would put a tie right under and then tighten it to the point so that the cup can't fall. And then the longer ties will go around this. And what we try to do sometimes is to make sure that we go around the top where the tabs of the lid fit in, uh, just so that doesn't pop out. But just, you can put a tie around it and that will hold it together. <coughs> Doug, once you get done with your, your roots are established, you remove the pot, the uh, green pot. If you know where you want to plant this chameleon, is there anything that will stop you from putting it directly in the ground instead of the pot? Uh, we think we we think and I think everyone else agrees that they should be in a pot and you should let them climatize to being in the soil there and that's why we leave them in a pot generally say we take everything off by the middle of October we could plant those in the late I mean, early spring, but we generally will wait until the next fall to plant them and leave them in a pot for a year. And your little hospital you talked about, is that a shaded, semi-shade, covered, what is it? It's a, mine is a real combination now because where I have the hospital, I lost four trees there. Mm -hmm. So that uh, part of it is more shaded than the other but as we have found out, and if you look at the garden here, camellias can survive the sun. They do better with the partial shade, but there are certain ones that do very well in the sun. And those are the darker colors. Am I still correct on saying that, Gene? You know, the reds and those do much better than the whites. The whites really seem to fade more in the sun. Yes? What's the combination for the soil, for the pots? When we put them into pots? You said there's a special soil. Well, our special soil is that we use some um, uh, potting soil. I, I don't have the good soil that Gene does, so we put some additives with it. And uh, I can write this down and we'll put it in there because I would be telling you the wrong amount. We generally put a little peat moss in it periodically if it is really dry and sort of mix it up that way. Uh, we have been known to put a little mill organite with them. So we try not to put, you know, fertilizer per se, but the mill organite does help on these. Would compost help? Uh, compost would help, but you want to 
make sure that it's loose and to the point that it's not going to hold everything in there, pack it down. Have I left out thing, Ron, John? Um, one thing that helps to keep the root on, on, on the strip part is that if you, if you wet first, then the root tunnel will stay through at the bottom. What the part? The part, the part, the part, the part for where the part was, for the yeah. strip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you wet that first, you'll just wet it a little bit, and then the root tunnel will stay in there a lot better. Yes. We have, Gene, was it pine bark and what else did we put in that? I can't pine remember with that. Pine bark mulch. Okay. That, that's it. Yeah. All right. And I have it written down the amounts, but I can't tell you off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I'll be good to put on the left side somewhere as a tip. Mm -hmm. That following formula. We'll, we'll put it on the website, because I do have it written down. And, and one of the events that we should think about next winter, after the Camellia show, is if uh, Kay and Dudley have not sold a piece of property on Whitfield, we should go as a group there because you will be amazed to see these camellias that are growing in the woods there. Mm -hmm. And they really are beautiful. Mm -hmm. See, that's worth the price of membership. A lot of people don't realize that you can get a membership. Okay, that's a good idea of what we do. And if you get caught and you're doing some of this, you can call us and we'd be happy to try to show you, you know, when it's much easier when you're doing this on a plant and uh, it's not wiggling around on you. <laughs> no, it's not 100%. Uh, I, I would say it's somewhere between 80 and 90 percent. That's pretty. It, it, it's a good success rate. What we have the problem is they are very, we've got plants that have good roots, they're growing, and when we go to Bonaventure and plant them, our biggest problem there is when it's dry, we have to water them. Mm -hmm. And so we spend some Tuesdays watering, and then the next big problem is that the system there is so old that we have a lot of days that we don't have water. There's been a leak here, a leak there, and they have to turn off all of the water. So we take water. I have probably 30 or 40 milk jugs in our basement. And so we just fill these up, and Ron and Belinda fill them up. And we all take these and pour. Uh, so it's, it's not an easy task to keep them growing when it is so dry. Well, thank you. I hope I didn't confuse you too much.